Hello, Denizens, former network executive reaction here. Today, I am covering Disney Plus's new show, National Treasure, Edge of History. In this overview, I will be exclusively looking at the show through the lens of a network executive. If you want a review of the show itself, I suggest checking out Latino Slant's review, which is much less charitable than mine. But this is not a review. However, there will be spoilers. You have been warned. What I'm doing here is dissecting what the producers did that made this show palatable to a network. I come from a network TV background, not, not streaming background. And you'll notice that many streaming series are slow burns, where nothing really happens until the last episode. I've always objected to this. While people view network TV as a dying dinosaur, it got many things right, such as making hit shows, and adhering to the rules of having many climaxes before each ad break. Initially, streaming writers took the opportunity and ignored these conventions. But it has now been proven keeping the rhythm of a classic network show works. For example, at about the 10-minute mark of this show, we get a new dilemma that their rent is being raised and they don't have the money. At the 20 minute mark, Jess meets Sadusky. At the 30 minute mark, their flat has been ransacked. Yes, that old chestnut. At the 40 minute mark, they arrive at the Mason's Chapel. And at the end, uh, there's a cliffhanger with the evil CZT. This is a properly structured episode. If I was working for any network and this show landed on my desk for review, I would have been thrilled. They got so many things right from an execution perspective. Does that guarantee success? No. But as an executive, I would be more confident moving forward with this show than that She-Hulk abomination that followed no rules. Before I get into that, let's, let's deal with the National Treasure name. This show is not National Treasure. Jerry Bruckheimer, the executive producer, owns the name. He, of course, produced the wildly successful and entertaining National Treasure movies with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, when I saw the trailer for this show and the apparent gender-swapped lead and the perfect computer-generated race-randomizer cast, I did have that, oh, not this shit again, reaction, as many of you had. But the show is not National Treasure and has nothing to do with National Treasure. It's an abuse of the brand, much like when the famous American Magnavox TV went out of business and some Chinese company bought the name and then just plastered Magnavox on everything from rice cookers to ear hair removers. That's what this is. Ignore the name. In fact, I'm going to call it fake national treasure or FNT from now on, even though they trotted out Harvey Keitel as Sadusky in the thing. But who remembers Keitel? As a network executive, I'm a whore. And if slathering the national treasure name brand on the thing brings in more eyeballs, I'm all in. In fact, it would not be ridiculous to imagine a scenario where a Disney exec asked Jerry to make a national treasure show with attractive young people. So what did they do right? Let's forget about the hilariously perfect application of race quotas that make up the cast. The most important thing is that each person was unique in body shape, character, and tone. 
There are many mandatory diversity quota shows where the cast all kind of mush together because they're all skinny, good looking, about the same height, and boring as f Should I point out the biggest idiot in this crew is the white guy? No, I, I'll resist doing that. So, as a network exec, I'm very happy that the lead, Lisette Oliveira, is stunning. I'm also glad that she's not fully immersed as a relic hunter at the start because that gives uh, the series growth potential. I get where they're going. The crew are misfits, but loyal and consider her the smartest person in the room. The creators of the show have completely embraced all the modern tropes of youthdom that's passed me by several times, the incessant recording of everything on their phones. One person even has their own YouTube live stream, which she does inside a branded tent thing, which I thought was, was pretty funny. Honestly, the characters are horribly self-absorbed, but I guess that is the generation they are reflecting, and I'm okay with that as long as the target demo actually shows up for the show. I didn't have to like Barney to accept the fact my daughter loved him. Catherine Zeta-Jones is the well-attired rich antagonist. I'm happy about that. I'm happy that the show has an overarching arc but solves several smaller mysteries within each show. This is also something most streaming shows just don't do, such as Rings of Power, which had many mystery boxes, and we had to wait till the final two shows to open them. Basically, nothing happened until the end. FNT has that wonderful expert Bruckheimer gloss. It's directed with a nice snap. The dialogue fits the characters and advances the story. The first show ended with a very dramatic cliffhangers. Is the show dumb? Yes. But the show had precision and flow, un unlike the sloppy mess that was Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I give the producers, writers, and directors full credit. It's the kind of show I would not hesitate to air and then wait for the audience's response. Now, so far on Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb, uh, they have they have been much less than kind. But I, I think that's maybe because they were review bombed over the trailer being nothing like National Treasure and, and being punished for it. A lesson that needs to be incorporated into this new social media world order by, by the networks and streaming services. As a person much smarter than me once said, companies no longer own their brands the customers do. Once again, this is not a creative judgment of whether Edge of History is good or not. It's an empirical take on how a network executive sees a show. Because honestly, 95% of the shows I saw were worse than this. If you leave comments like, this show sucked, you dumb then you have neither watched this video nor understood this video, or you were listening to it at eight times speed while also playing CSGO. Till next time, denizens, be seeing you.